Hey there, I'm Sage and you're watching D&D Daily, where we release new D&D content every day. If you are looking for D&D information and inspiration, then you are in the right spot because today we are going to be talking about Dr. Death, a healer out to kill. In order to play Dr. Death, you are going to need to be a Way of Mercy monk, a variant human, and you're either going to take the mobile or the weapon mastery feat. You're going to take the weapon mastery feat if you have that odd deck score to bump it up to an even deck score. Otherwise, take the mobile feat. Raised by the Way of Mercy monks, Dr. Death was trained in the ways of medicine as well as combat. She embraced the philosophy of her mentors about how death is the flip side of life. Killing is a part of what makes way for new life. Like a diseased limb, sometimes the pieces of the whole need to be removed for the health of the whole. The core philosophy of Dr. Death is that there are many ways to help people. Heal the good people or execute the dangerous criminals. Either way, you are helping. Several years back, she saved a boy's life. He was certainly going to die without her aid, but she made the choice to bring him back. The surgery was intense and left a very distinct scar running from his temple to his chin. On a fateful night several years after that boy's completed surgery, Dr. Death and her husband were sleeping soundly in bed. An intruder broke into their home and restrained them while they were still asleep. Waking up in this restrained state, Dr. Death was forced to watch this sick person kill her husband in a uniquely disturbing way. During this time, she noticed a very distinct scar on this culprit's face, the scar she had put there. After the mutilation was done, the man left, leaving her tied up to be found later by the authorities. After physically escaping this situation, she has not mentally escaped it. She needs to go find this person and remove him from the world. This was evil she kept in the world, and now it's her responsibility to remove it. Going back to her philosophy, there are two ways to help people. Heal the good and execute the dangerous. Both help. Now Dr. Death hunts the one she once healed. As a trained healer, Dr. Death is pragmatic. She knows when someone can be saved or when it's best just to end their misery. She does what needs to be done, not what she wishes could be done. Now this can sometimes lend Dr. Death to being somewhat cynical. Sometimes she thinks something is one way when it might actually have some hope there. She'd be like, oh no, this person can't be saved, best to end their misery. When possibly, even if there's a tiny, tiny chance, maybe it would be worth her time to try. But despite this cynical nature, she is altruistic. She genuinely wants to make the world a better place in whatever way she can. Whether it be helping somebody or taking evil away from the world. Unsurprisingly, after her trauma, she has been left with some emotional scars. She struggles falling asleep and sometimes wake up, wakes up in night terrors. She is not the most mentally healthy person at this point. This can mechanically be taken a few different ways. Maybe when she is restrained, she also has the frightened condition because of her trauma from being restrained beforehand. Or maybe have her roll a d20 and on a natural one, she can't sleep the whole night and doesn't get the benefits of whatever rest she was trying to. Have fun with it. It's a, it's a, it's a downside that makes her a more flavorful character. In combat, Dr. Death is a hit and run striker. She gets in there, does her damage, and gets out before she can get hit. Eventually, she becomes a debuffer as well. This happens at level 6, when her Hands of Harm ability also gets the ability to poison someone without a saving throw. That is huge! So you choose one person per round who is poisoned for that full round, and all of their attacks have disadvantage on all your allies. This is going to be your bread and butter. Now at level 3, it's going to be tempting to use your Flurry of Blows as well as your Hands of Harm, but you don't have a lot of key points to go around, so it's probably going to be more effective to more often than not just focus on your Hands of Harm, because the difference between your Flurry of Blows and your Hands of Harm is you get to spend your key point after for Hands of Harm as opposed to before with Flurry of Blows, which could mean that you would miss your attack. And at level 6, it's going to be tempting to try Stunning Strike as well as poisoning your enemy, but it's so much better to get a guaranteed poison with no saving throw than it is to maybe get a stun. So I suggest saving your key points for getting that poison condition off. You may also have weapons if you took the weapon mastery feat. Now it's totally up to you what you do with these weapons, but there are a few standout suggestions. 
The whip is really good because it's the only finesse weapon with reach, and it's going to get damage bonuses from your from your martial arts die. The blowgun is a ranged option you can take that would allow you to play in a more survivable style, which might be good between levels 1 and, and 3. And the warhammer is your best option for dealing damage because it's going to let you do that d10 of damage before making your, your unarmed strikes. And it does bludgeoning damage, so if you ever decide to take the crusher feat, it still does the damage you need it to. Out of combat, your mobility is key here. Scout ahead and get to hard to reach places. You have the mobility to go ahead of your team, see what's going on, and the mobility to get back to them unharmed. You make a good lookout with your mobility to climb up to high places, so I might add some sneak to your skill set. During your downtime, use your medicine skill to help the sick. You're all about helping people, so heal the good and terminate the bad. You also would search out for bad people to terminate, especially that young man with the scar on his face. Whether you took the mobile option or the weapon mastery feat, both styles don't change. You're going to get in there, hit, and run. With the mobile feat, you can do that naturally. With the weapons feat, you can do that with the whip. Of course, if you're needing to get your hands of harm off, that's the time when you're going to pull out your hammer, go smack them hard, and then punch them to get, punch them to get that hands of harm off. This will make you less mobile, but will give you more damage. Keep that in mind. And while Wisdom is less important for you than it is for most monk builds, because you don't need a high Stunning Strike DC, you're still going to want it because of it gives you more damage with your Hands of Harm, and it gives you a bit more AC, so it's still important. Something to always remember with monks is they need decks like a camel needs water. They need to have it, so really prioritize getting a high dex. Dr. Death has some exploitable weaknesses. Range is going to be a major weakness for you. Your best option is probably going to be the blowgun, which is going to be one attack with just a martial die. It's not very strong. You're not the squishiest, but you're also not tanky. Be very mindful of your position and use your high mobility to keep you safe. Something to keep in mind if you took the weapon mastery feat is that even though you're proficient with all four of these weapons, you're going to need to use the Tasha's optional rule called dedicated weapon to be able to use them as a monk weapon. And you can only pick one of these per long rest. So each day you're going to need to pick your weapon and you can't switch it. So you gotta keep it in mind. If you want to use your whip today, you're not gonna be able to use your warhammer. So there's some finesse in your decision making here. As an NPC, Dr. Death would be neutral good. She might be a DMPC that can lead your party on a mission to go find the serial killer who might be causing havoc outside of just her life. She, it, the, the serial killer could be causing havoc all over the place. Could be a really cool doctor that you run into at a certain city. You just go into the city and there's this, just this badass doctor who sometimes can just kill people. <laughs> If Dr. Death watched the party do something that she considered evil enough that she felt, you know what, removing these people would make the world a better place, she would engage them, but she would always do it intelligently. She's not dumb, so she wouldn't try and fight them head on, but she might start trying to get them one on one. I think the key to Dr. Death as an NPC is really nailing her philosophy of sometimes help, sometimes kill, that, prag that pragmatism. Try and make sure you incorporate that if you bring her into your campaign. How would you use Dr. Death in one of your games? What would you do to make her better? Let us know in the comments below. You can also tell us what you thought of this video by giving us either a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Either way, helps us know what kind of content you're looking for. On the next episode of D&D Flavor Builds, we're going to be talking about the hybrid, a half-breed who hunts both breeds. Hit the subscribe button, because you're not going to want to miss it. See ya!